Hello, I'm Jeffrey Pogue, and I'm here to tell you the maximums of what makes up everything. Elements. For example, the heaviest, the lightest, the most conductive, and the most reactive of all the elements. Elements make up everything, from your daily coffee to the tallest of mansions. Elements can be found in their pure form, for example, iron, silver, and gold, but they can also be found as compounds, for example, water and bronze. Anyways, let's start. Starting with weight. What is the heaviest of all the elements? Some people may define the heaviest as the densest, or how compact the atoms are to each other. However, I'm going to go for a different approach. Pounds per square foot. Elements vary a lot in weight, but the heaviest element that was ever discovered is organism. This, up until recently, was known as Ununoctium. The only problem is that the longest this element has ever actually existed is 0.89 milliseconds. The other problem is that only one out of a million tries to create this actually succeeds. The Russian scientist who discovered it only succeeded in making two atoms, and then that decayed. So, very hard work. Another problem with it only creating two atoms is that it's quite hard to measure anything about it. However, somehow they managed to measure it in U, or Unified Atomic Mass Units. And because I'm not a professional scientist, I have no idea what that means. Though being the caring scientist I am, I found it out for you. I found out how many pounds per cubic foot silver was, then found out its Unified Atomic Mass Unit. I divided one by the other, and took that number, and divided Oganison's Unified Atomic Mass Unit by that. I ended up with something that was around 1,785.33 pounds per cubic foot. That is about half of a car. And for all you non-American metric users, that's about 28,598.22 kilograms per cubic meter. That is a lot. So whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, Oganison doesn't exist for longer, I don't know. That's up to you. Now onto the lightest of elements. The lightest element ever to exist is hydrogen, which coincidentally was also the first element to exist. Both hydrogen and helium share a property in that both of them are lighter than air. That is one of the reasons most people use helium for party balloons, because it can float. We would use hydrogen because we have much more of it, but it's also explosive, which would not be a very fun party story. Once again, I put my formula in to find out its unified atomic mass unit in cubic feet, and I found out that one cubic foot of it would weigh one five thousandth of a pound. Now you may be thinking, wait a second, air is the lightest thing. When you're not on a scale, it says zero. Well, the reason for that is that air is all around it, pushing up and down, making that not change anything. One cubic foot of air would actually weigh 0 0.08 pounds. However, the pressure it weighs on you every day is 14.7 pounds per square inch. If you want to use this, next time you have a lot of homework, you can really say to your parents, you are actually under a lot of pressure. Now to our next maximum, conductivity. There's both thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. The winner for both of these, however, is silver. You may be thinking, what about copper? I mean, copper is used in everything all the wires that are used all around us. And you're right that we use that, but the thing is, copper is a lot cheaper than silver, and silver is overall actually a better conductor. They don't use silver for wires, but they do often use it for contact points. For example, on a microwave, when you push the button, what you're actually doing is making two pieces of silver touch each other, making a current flow. Another very important use of silver is in solar panels. All the grid lines you see on a solar panel are actually made of silver. In 2006, Scott and Julie Brusaw proposed on making all the streets in the world solar panels. A large problem with this idea is that people would probably steal the solar panels from the street, take out the silver, and sell that for a lot of money. Finally, reactivity. A reaction takes place when electrons jump from one atom to another. The most reactive element on the periodic table is fluorine. All atoms want to have their outer shell completely full. Atoms like these will take electrons from other atoms that are willing to give some up to fill their own. For example, if an atom has only seven electrons, 
then it will react strongly and even possibly violently to take electrons to fill itself up. Fluorine is one of these elements that is one away from having their outer shell full, which means that it will react very strongly and very violently to take any element which has one extra electron in its outer shell. Fluorine is known for making things that are normally thought of as unflammable quite flammable. For example, glass, water, and sand. These materials don't normally light, but put fluorine with them and... However, though dangerous, it is also used every day in most people's lives, in fact, put into the body as toothpaste or fluoride. That compound, fluoride, helps protect and clean your teeth. And so concludes the maximums of the elements. Heaviest, lightest, most conductive, and most reactive. Tune in next week for stretchiest, bounciest, meanest, and fluffiest. See you then.